Hey guys, it's Speedy. Sorry I haven't made a video in a long time. Uh, I just ran out of topics and I also lost uh, the muff that went on the microphone. Like that little foamy thing they put on the mics. Yeah, I call it a muff. Apparently it's called a windsock. But I will continue to call it a muff. So, yeah, today I went to Long and McQuaid and I bought one of these little muff things. It was like eight bucks. Kind of hard to put on, but anyways, hopefully this video all turns out good, and uh, the sound will come up clear when I'm going to be riding my new ride, which is right here. So, yeah, this is my new bike, the CB300F, completely brand new, 2015, and I've had it for like four days now, and I've already got, let's see here, I've already got 431 kilometers within a few days. Uh, yeah, I've been riding out with my friends, been riding to work, and yeah, I've already put on a considerable amount of kilometers, considering. Anyways, so, uh, I'll explain to you guys, I'll give you guys, like, a review, like, on the acceleration, you know, how it breaks the suspension, uh, it's top speed. And I'm going to be comparing it, obviously, to my previous bike, which is the CBR125. Some of you guys may think, oh, this is a dual wishy bike, it's not a real bike yet, oh, 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 oh. fuck you, I don't care. To me, this is a much better bike than the 125, it's still quite a bit of a step up, actually, even though it's just the next step. But it's considerably more powerful, and I'll explain to you guys why. And I'll give you guys the pros and the cons of this bike. Um, but anyways, let's get this uh, let's get this thing started. Get out of here. Get away from all the people that seem to be staring at me as I'm doing my videos. And hopefully the microphone will be all good. Okay. So first off the bat, look at it. Sounds like fucking sounds awesome compared to the other one. Um, it's still, obviously it's still breaking in. So things are a little bit rough, like the motor is kind of rough a bit still. And uh, so yeah, so I'm trying to put on, right now I'm actually trying to put on as many kilometers as I can to get it to 1000. So that way I can do the first oil change and then I can rev it as much as I want. Anyway, so I'll see you guys in a second once I get out of my driveway. Okay, well first things first, it is obviously heavier than the 125, and uh, at the slower speeds it is it's a little bit heavier, like it is, it is a bit heavier, but it's not, but it's still, this bike is still fairly light, I mean it's only a one cylinder, and I think it's got 22 horsepower. That compares to the 125, which is, uh, ah, fuck, what is it, like, it's got 14 horsepower, and yeah, it's a single cylinder as well. Uh, but, even, but, uh, it's still, it, even though it weighs a bit more, it's still pretty, fl it still flicks around pretty well. And I, I just love how this bike turns. It's just so comfortable when you're turning. Thank you. First things first, the friction zone on this bike, very well adjusted. It's about halfway point, I think, and you definitely feel it. Um, when you're taking off on this bike, I'm telling you, you definitely feel a lot more clutch bite than on the 125. On the 125, you release the clutch and you literally feel nothing. 
On this bike, you actually feel the friction zone a lot more. Uh, Hopefully everyone's all fucking gone home. In terms of acceleration, I have to say, this bike is fucking awesome. Like... It is absolutely awesome. Um, on the 125, the thing I didn't like, well, I mean, I guess sport bikes in general, they're usually tuned like this. Um, you have to get up to like seven or 8,000 RPM to really feel any kind of uh, power. Like right now, okay, like right now I'm doing 50 kilometers an hour, right? I'm at four RPM. This is like chilling speed, okay? I bring it up to five, whoa! Like, I, you feel the pull, like you feel, this bike is tuned, so that way the power is a much lower end. So, as an in-town bike, where you're going from light to light, you know, you're stopping all the time. Uh, this bike is fantastic because it picks up much earlier. You don't have to rev it to like 7, 8,000 RPM all the time just to start going. And that's what you want in town, you know, when you're accelerating, you don't, you don't want to have to bring it up to seven or eight thousand every time. Every time you pull away from the light. <laughs> yeah. See? Boom! Eight thousand, five thousand RPM. Boom! It's picking up. Alright, so getting up, so getting in terms of, uh, of seating position, this bike is a lot more comfortable than the 125. The 125, you're kind of lean more forward and it starts, it does start to hurt your back a little bit. It might not, I mean, yeah, you don't lean as much as like a, a 600R, you know, but still, still, like if you're leaned like that, you know, for a long period of time, it does start to feel in your back. On this bike, it feels kind of, it's almost like you're sitting in a chair, like you're straight up. Uh, you have to ride this, you really have to ride this bike for like a couple hours to actually start to feel like pain in your ass or pain in your back. The other one, within an hour you could already feel, you know, some pain in your ass, some pain in your back, in your arms. Um, so that, so the seating position is pretty fucking fantastic. Um, another thing I like as well, getting to the controls. I'm short. I have short arms. Like I'm, I'm getting back. Yeah, getting back to to other aspects of the bike. Um, I don't have very big hands, and on the 125, no, it's a small bike. I found that the controls were kind of far. Like, I'd have to, like, reach out a lot with my hand to get to the clutch and brake because of how they were positioned on the handlebars. Ooh, it looks like there's fucking glass everywhere there. Whoa! Look how it picks up. Around 5 RPM, boom, it just it wants to go. Ugh. Yeah, you have, I find that I have much better control over the controls with this bike. Uh, it's much easier on my uh, hand for the clutch. And it's, uh, and it's definitely, definitely easier for the front brake on my hand. Um, it's much more suited towards, um, towards my hand size. And, the le and also, uh, I don't feel like I have to reach out as far with my arms. To the uh, to the handlebars as well. Like you're, it's nice and upright. It's almost like if you're riding a uh, what they call that uh, a mountain bike. Yeah, 
Riding this is kind of like riding a mountain bike. Oh, look at that. The fucking sun is already going down. Oh, man. I don't want summer to be over. So, yeah, getting back to the bike. I absolutely love the mirrors on this thing. On the 125, the mirrors are completely useless. You couldn't see anything. You're like this to try to look in the mirrors. But because of the positioning of this bike and how big the mirrors are, like, you can see everything. Like, you, all you got to do is kind of glance down a bit, like just a tiny bit ever so slightly and you see everything everything in the back so the visibility on this bike is much much better uh, it's also awesome when you're carrying passengers because of the upright position the passengers have more room so you know you don't feel squished like you don't feel like squished or your 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 legs because of also because it's upright your legs are not as like bent like they're they're more like to a 90 degree angle so it's also a lot easier on the legs i find uh another ni another nice thing about this bike is it has even though it has a more power than the 125 it's got a lot of low-end power which is great around town like it picks up to the speed limit pretty quick um is that it's not so powerful that for a beginner you'd like pop a wheelie accidentally or something if you revved it too much, you know? And the top speed is like, I haven't gone to the top speed unfortunately yet, because I can't go, I pretty much can't go over 99, 100 kilometers an hour because I haven't broken the bike yet. Once I get over 500K, then I can bring up to 7,000 RPM, so I might be able to do like 110 or something. But until then, I can't actually take it to its top speed. Plus, its top speed is like, it's top speed is fast enough. It's like 150 or something. Something like that, 150. It's quick. So if you're cruising down the highway, and that's at red line, obviously, in sixth gear. So if you're cruising... Oh, God. So if you're cruising down the highway at like uh, 110, 120, 130, depending where the speed limit is. I know in Europe the speed limit's like 130. Uh, over here it's like 100, so you do 110, 120. Um, apparently it revs at around seven, eight thousand RPM, something like that. So it's, it's, it doesn't rev too much on the highway. So it's not like you'd be burning crazy gas and it doesn't bur put too much strain on the engine. So if you want a bike that can go on the highway, like occasionally, you know, maybe for an hour or so, like you want to do kind of a small road trip. If you rode this all day long. I think the vibrations would get to you because it does vibrate a bit at the higher speeds and there's no windshield. Uh, it would get tiring. But if you ride a lot in town on country roads and on the highway sometimes, this bike this bike is great. Like, it's a good all-rounder. It's a good all-rounder. Yeah, the brakes on this bike pretty smooth. See, like, look. I mean, they're brand new, but. Oh. definitely find them smoother than on the other bike. Um, now that I've gone through uh, the things I do like about this bike, I'll go for the things uh, that, that aren't as perfect with the bike or that I don't like as much. Some of the, the things I dislike, basically. Actually, you know what? There's another thing I do like about this bike. And that is, um, and that is that uh, engine braking on this bike is fantastic, and rev matching on this bike is also very very simple because the, it's because it has a lot of low end power and you don't have to change gears at such a high RPM. I find that rev matching is a lot easier on this bike. 
I mean, you just give a bit of gas, you're up at like 4 RPM, where it'll jump when you downshift. Like, let's say you're at 3, you downshift to 4, you just rev it to 4, let go of the clutch. Very, very smooth. Very easy to rev match on this bike. That's another thing I like about this bike. Some of the things I don't like about this bike, um, well, I can still touch the ground fairly well on this bike. Like, it's still not super high up. But I can't touch it as well as on the 125. The plus side to that is my legs do get to stretch out a little bit more when I'm riding it. And I don't feel like they're cramped on the pegs, you know? Same thing for the passenger. The tires on this bike is also... Oh, another thing too, the tires on this bike are pretty good. They're better than the stock. 125 tires stock 125 tires are not very good except in dry conditions i haven't rode this bike really in the rain yet so we'll see about that but uh but yeah i find the traction is much better with the tires on these bikes i mean the wheels definitely are bigger um one of the things i don't like about this bike and the main thing uh is the con like the turn signals are all the way down here and they are kind of stiff because they're new. Like, where they put the turn signal is where the horn used to be. So sometimes someone cuts me off and I'm like, I want to give this guy a freaking honk. And I'm pressing the freaking turn signal. And then sometimes I want to turn, like press the turn signal light, and I press the uh, horn by accident because it's reversed on this bike. Mm. Oh, you know what? There is another thing I like about this bike too. I didn't talk about it. It has an, the, 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 the digital uh, panel is much better. It's much more accurate than the other one. And it gives me the time. Like I, I, the, the time on here, I think is two minutes off or something, but at least I have a rough idea of what time it really is. On the other bike, I didn't have any clock or anything. So I'm riding and I don't even know what time it is and I have to stop and check my phone. So yeah, another good thing. Oh, another good thing too of the bike, bigger tank. It has a bigger tank, so you don't have to fill up as much. Like you can ride for a longer period of time without filling up. I mean, it does it, it does cost a little bit more on gas to fill this bike up too. Like the gas is a little bit more overall in terms of gas mileage, but it's still like between 60 to 80 miles per gallon, which is better than any car and definitely bigger than uh, you know, like a definitely more efficient than a 600 or something like that. So it's still pretty efficient in, the, in terms of gas mileage. Uh, the insurance isn't too bad. It's roughly the same as the 125, but you can actually ride on the highway with this bike from, you know, without it vibrating too, too much. I mean, it does vibrate a bit on the highway, but not but not as much as the 125 and it doesn't put as much strain on the engine. I guess that's one of the things too that I don't like about I still kind of have an issue with this bike is uh, it is a bit vibrating sometimes like I say at the higher speeds but over but uh, but still still compared to the 125 uh, it's still the, the, the throttle is still uh, a lot smoother and the bike definitely vibrates a lot less you also don't need to maintain the bike as much like you don't have to get as many valve inspections on the 125 you need to do a valve inspection like every 4000 k because there's so much compression in that tiny engine whereas on this one it's like every 10,000 or something so it needs less maintenance overall so if you're debating whether to get the 125 or the 300 as your first bike or you want to upgrade from the 125 to the 300 uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. This bike definitely needs less maintenance. The parts are probably more, to be fair, but at the same time, like I say, you don't need as much maintenance. I guess one of the things, too, with this bike is uh, the gearbox is, a, is still a little bit clicky, kind of like the 125. Like, it does go click. It is a little bit clicky, like when you're shifting up and down. But... 
but compared to the 125 the gearbox on this thing is still smoother a lot smoother but compared to the 125 yeah it's still smoother it's still smoother the gearbox on the 300 is still smoother than on the 125 and uh, I like the fact that neutral that one that first gear neutral and second are not too far from each other so when you're shifting the second gear I find you're not as I find it's a lot easier to click in you know like click in right and when you're trying to find uh, and yeah so that's another thing the transition between first and second gear I find is smoother on this bike than on the 125 then again it is a new gearbox too uh, the throttle response like I say much fucking better much fucking better on this thing Um, the one thing you do have to be careful is because the throttle response is so good on this bike if you just go like this like just turn it a little bit you're gonna go up by like five kilometers per hour very easily so you got to be much more precise with how you use the throttle on this bike as opposed to the 125 like you have to keep it in in place more so so to speak But still, overall, it's a good thing. Anyways, guys, I hope you heard this video. It doesn't turn on to be uh, some sort of muffly thing. I know it's been a while since I've made videos. My next video is probably going to be talking about pillion riding. Uh, since I've been doing a lot of that lately. So, you know, riding with passengers. Like riding with a passenger. But all in all, thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope the new muff on this microphone turns out to be awesome. It was like $7 after all. But anyways, thanks for watching guys. Have yourselves a wonderful rest of your summer.